chief of the Delaware people. The fifth now, I have, okay, even more, so the fifth time, the fifth time, consecutive time of uh, your people. And then, I'm really proud to ask Sherry, Sherry Huff. She's, well, basically a little bit of a colleague of mine and of mm -hmm. yours. She's also a filmmaker and a journalist. And she grew up really on reserve with the elderly. So she grew up with a native language of her aunts, her aunties, her uncles, the family, plenty of cousins over there. But it wasn't as about being an adult that you really were fully emerged into your native language, mm -hmm. that you started to learn or to relearn again your native language. And during that time, you also discovered that very special link of your people to Germany. Mm -hmm. to those missionaries, which then of course also came up with the idea, I need to work on that. I want to rediscover discover this part of our history. And in America, in Canada, you are a well-known filmmaker, TV journalist with the colleagues from CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. And last but not least, Werner schneider Pinto. if I may ask you to come up front. He's now well, our theologist. He's actually from Frankfurt, working there for the Protestant Church. He studied Protestant theology over here in Germany. Uh, he used to work as a uh, scientific assistant for systematic theology, and in those days also concentrated, of course, on issues linked to missionary and missionary uh, work. He used to be the priest of the uh, Protestant church in Waldorf, not too far away from here, up to Mannheim. No. Another Waldorf? No, no, it's another Waldorf. Uh, another Waldorf, it's just sorry for that. south of Frankfurt, it's uh, just near to the Near the Frankfurt, Frankfurt. Airport. stayed in the Frankfurt area, <laughs> but anyway, Waldorf, <laughs> in the 80s basically. <laughs> and you also link to what we have here, to film work. Uh, since 1985, you're also a member of the uh, jury, the selection committee of the Protestant Film Works. Uh, so you've shared many sessions where films were discussed, filmmaking was discussed, and this again is the link to this project here, your Dr. Mm -hmm. Susanna's documentary project. And uh, since September 2007, you've been working uh, with the city church at the St. Catherine's Church in Frankfurt. That's correct. Okay. So that's our board up here in front. And I'd like to start with you, Chief Peters, and maybe the first question is also the most difficult one of the entire evening. Oh, good. Because it's basically the first question of Susanna's film. Reflecting back on all this discovery or rediscovery of your own culture, your own tradition, your own people's history for the last 200 or 300 years, talking about those missionaries, what came up to your mind from your understanding today, what did these people want from you? Why did they get in contact with you? What was the mission from your understanding of the missionaries? Yeah, and from my understanding of the missionaries, when they first got in contact with us, that they were, they were very uh, uh, spiritually driven men who thought they were going into a new country to um, fulfill God's calling on their life. And I'm, I, I never yet discovered why uh, they picked us, uh, that uh, we were in need of, uh, I guess they thought we were in need of help at that time, and, and we probably were in need of help by the time we come in contact with the missionaries because we had been pushed out of our traditional territories. Our, our populations had been diminished. And, and one of the, the big things, and, and everybody knows, is that alcohol was uh, destroying the culture and destroying the people. And, and I believe the missionaries' original intent was, was honorable and uh, just to help the people survive. Uh, and it's been, uh, from what I've learned, uh, on my visit here, is that uh, these Moravian people are, uh, they come from a similar background, and that, that's something that I never knew. I never knew that they had been pushed out of Czechoslovakia and they had to walk for 10 days to get to, to Hernhut, and that they, uh, they actually uh, uh, loved God and they thought they had found something that everybody had to have. 
So, but when they got in contact with us, along with uh, with what they brought was uh, not just the gospel, but a whole European culture. They brought their uh, pots and pans, their stoves, their rules, their uh, uh, the rules that you can't have a relationship with God unless you do A, B, C, and D. Mm -hmm. And and I think that was kind of foreign. So it, it's my understanding that the in the beginning they they started out well, and I often uh, they they started out with good hearts and best intentions, but uh, but I really believe that all made man-made things are uh, doomed to fail. <laughs> and that uh, they're trying to present uh, they're trying to make us into Europeans. They would have had much more success had they let us let us be Lenape mm -hmm. and worship God in our way than to become European and worship theirs, because along with the uh, with the problems that, that they solved temporarily, temporarily they uh, they 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 broke a very serious uh, connection with ours our people who we were and our ancestors, and so our people had to go on that that even more difficult journey of, uh, of leaving their culture behind. And, and I don't think uh, very many uh, Europeans can under, really, really understand what that must have been like. I can't really, really understand what it was like. So you and still have to like reconnect to that situation of, first of all, a collision of cultures, your native culture with that European cultures, or culture which was imported? Yes. Yeah, I think right now we've, we've recognized that uh, the only way for our community to heal and get well is to reconnect with our ancestors. That there's, uh, it, it's a proven, we've proven it. The, the picture you've seen with uh, all the people standing in front of the community center and the kids, every November we, we take a whole week and we celebrate sobriety. Mm -hmm. We celebrate uh, healthy living. We call it, uh, help me Sherry, well, 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 oh, well, at home. well, at home. well, at home. well, 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 a good path, and, good. 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 and over the 10 years that I've been chief, when I first started out and we first had that event where we'd gather and uh, celebrate sobriety, we had maybe 12, 13 people mm -hmm. would march around the community celebrating. Uh, last year we had 250. And, and people were walking and young people and old people and we were all together as a community. And afterwards we had a giant feast mm -hmm. and, and we had, had singing and, uh, and drumming and, uh, and dancing, like we dance, not like uh, powwow dancers. Yeah. So, so there's, a, there's a really strong uh, rebirth mm -hmm. by putting down some of the uh, bad things from that were introduced to us and by picking up the things that the Creator gave our ancestors in order to worship. So that, that's uh, the path that we're taking and, and you can see it from when Sherry was talking about residential schools that uh, these schools were run by uh, different uh, religions, uh, the Anglicans, the Catholics, uh, the Protestants and in those schools, those, those children were uh, beaten, abused, and starved, and uh, and and neglected to death, and and it was all done with uh, under the guise of religion. Mm -hmm. And and when they came out of those schools, they were uh, totally disconnected yeah. from from religion, their own culture, and their own religion. But family. now, when it when it's and starting to come yeah. back. Mm -hmm. It's starting to come back. Our young people are learning the language. We have 225 people. We only have 400 people in the community, or 600 people in the community. A third of the community come so out to celebrate. So you're a total of like 1,200? All and together, like yes. A third lives in your community. Yeah, about half. About, about half. 600 about half. in the community. But I thought it was a great success that oh, a third yeah. of the community comes out to but celebrate. From what you've been telling us so far, sounds despite all the problems you've been facing like a, well, simply saying, kind of a success story because you're rediscovering your traditions, your culture, Absolutely. the young kids, the children, uh, the teenagers basically started learning your own native language Absolutely. again. 
So that sounds like a reintegration and also estimation of your own culture. And from the photos we saw, Sherry, in your photo show, mm. I mean, that looked really nice and neat and like a good place to live. But are you people today, like would you consider yourself or your people to be really happy? Or are you missing some, let's say, essential rights, still essential parts of your identity? Well, I think we've, uh, since we've arrived here in Germany, uh, you could hear us laughing mm -hmm. all around the country and into the Czech Republic. Um, we're, we use laughter as medicine. If you know us, you know mm -hmm. we like to laugh. Doesn't always mean we're always happy. Sometimes we use laughter because we're hurting inside. Um, and love and it, could be a relief. Yes, and it, and it can be really a release, and we do use it as medicine. But I would say that um, our community is, is not unlike most communities in that um, there are, you know, people who, who are happy and well and others who are struggling. And sometimes it can go back and forth. Um, when it comes to our rights, as you saw in the, the slideshow presentation, um, we see our, our rights being infringed upon by, by uh, the Canadian government mm -hmm. that have, have had that happen. Um, we're hopeful that the change of government is going to see a reverse in that. Mm -hmm. um, we're very hopeful, um, but we're also very cynical because we know that doesn't tend to happen, yeah. that, that, that reversal of, of the erosion of, of rights. We're seeing an erosion of our education rights, mm -hmm. where we want to be in charge of our educating our own children, not the state, not the, not, state, not not the, the government. government. Mm -hmm. We want to have a say in what we learn, because I grew up not knowing anything about my people, nothing. I didn't know I was from New York. My grandparents didn't tell me because there was a disconnect from the residential school. Mm -hmm. That story didn't make it to my generation. And so I had no idea mm -hmm. until maybe 10, 15 years ago. And I thought, wow, we're from Manhattan? Mm -hmm. We're from New York City? <laughs> now I really got to go. Yeah. And what was really interesting too is, is that, that, that um, the word Manhattan is our word. Mm -hmm. I, I thought work, yeah. how, I, in fact, when I found out, when I learned this, I cried mm -hmm. because we have very few speakers. You know, I'm getting emotional again. <laughs> yeah, but thanks for Language sharing Language is this. very important. Language is very important and, I mean, you just mentioned language, yes. but also like that gap of telling your own people history as yes. part of your own history. Yes. And this is where I want to get Werner in. Mm -hmm. Could you help us a bit with, well, basically a def definition of identity in a sense? What are we basically talking about? Is it like Chief Peter's identity or Sherry's identity talking about the identity of an individual? Or is it the identity of a group? the people, the Delaware people, the Belenape, or is it a larger identity? What kind of identity are we talking about tonight? I think identity is an open process. 